Praise the Lord. Well, beloved, I can talk all night long, to be honest with you, but I won't because I think we're kind of urgent for healing tonight. But if you don't mind, I'll get down closer to you. This feels too far away and too formal. So I'll make it a little bit closer to you if that's okay. First of all, I want to give all of you a healing scapular, the green scapular, and share with you a couple stories because Mary, the Virgin Mary, is a mediatrix of all graces, including the grace of healing. So I want to share with you first a story from my own family. I'm one of eight children, and uh, we were born and raised in Tampa, Florida. Some of my family is still there, so I'm used to hot weather. And then I was assigned to Central America for many years. Now I'm near Atlanta. And there in Tampa, where I first learned the faith, I was sort of immersed in it. And one of the treasures of the faith, of course, is devotion to Mary. It's more than a treasure. I think that devotion to Mary is not a nicety, it's a necessity. It's not a nicety, it's a necessity. We need to enter the heart of Mary tonight. Amen? and begin loving Jesus with her love, believing in him with her faith, hoping in him with her hope. It's the secret to everything. Amen? It really is. We want to be healed through Mary's intercession. Once when I came home from school, my oldest sister, Connie, was crying. So I got home, and there was my sister sitting at her normal place at the dining room table, because there's 10 of us, you know. It wasn't dinner time, it was before dinner, But Connie was sitting in her normal place, and Mom was sitting next to her, and Connie was crying a lot. It was obviously that she was in great pain. And I said to my mom, Mom, what's wrong with Connie? And Mama said to me, well, Jim, she has migraine headaches. She'd just been diagnosed. And I said, Mom, I never heard of that. What's, What's that, a migraine headache? And so Mom tried to explain it to me, I don't think I've ever had one, but they say it's terrible. Like they said, your head is like it's splitting in two with this kind of headache. And they gave my sister some medications, the doctor did. They'd already been trying them, and nothing was working. And Connie was in desperation. And I looked at her, and I looked at Mom, and I said, Mama, yeah, Jim, I know what you need to do. What? You need a green scapular from Our Lady for Connie. A, a what? A green scapular. Can I borrow the car and get one for Connie from the Catholic bookstore? So yes. So mom, they loaned me the car. (laughs) They were very brave, weren't they? I was a teenager. And I went and I went to the the St. Michael's Catholic bookstore in Tampa and I got a green scapular. It cost me all of 25 cents. And I came home and we lived right across the street from the Catholic church. The scapulars need to be blessed, you see. So I went straight to father across the street. I had father bless the green scapular. He did that. It just took a moment. I'm going to show you here, in case you haven't seen one. We have a whole bundle of them here. So Father blessed one of these little green scapulars. We're going to give you one in just a moment. It has an image of Our Lady on one side and her Immaculate Heart on the other. Well, I ran back across the street. Connie is there, still in pain, still crying. I said, Mom, here it is for Connie. Connie, put this on. Connie took it and put it on. I was like maybe 15 or 16, I think it was. So Connie was about 19 or 20. She put the scapular on, and immediately the headache stopped. Immediately. I mean, bamoose, gone. Hasta la vista, baby. Gone. Just like that. Amen? Isn't that beautiful? And it's so nice to see a miracle in your own family home. Amen? Our Catholic faith belongs in the home, the domestic church, in the home. Well, that's not the end of the story. A few months, excuse me, a few months later, I came home from school, and Connie is crying again. It's like three months later. She had been perfectly healed. And I said, Connie, Mama, what's wrong with Connie? She said, Jimmy, she has the migraine headaches again. And I looked at her and said, Connie, Where's your green scapular? She said to me, I lost it today. 
I said, Mom, I know just what we need to do. <laughs> what? Can I borrow the car again? I went straight to St. Michael's Catholic Bookstore. I bought another green scabbard for all of 25 cents. Went back home, went across the street, had Father bless it, gave it to Connie. Connie, put this on. She put it on, gone. And they never came back. Amen? Should we clap for Jesus and Mary? Don't you just love Jesus and Mary? Isn't it cool to know they're alive? They're not a pretty story, they're living persons. Amen? They're alive. Well, fast forward, I'm a missionary priest in England. And I had to do mass in what's called the Boonies, way out in the middle of nowhere on the shore of England, these three little tiny churches. And I got to one of them to say mass, and the two uh, sacristan ladies were there. They were Irish. There's a lot of Irish people who work in England. They're the most beautiful Irish brogue. I wish I could do that accent, you know. My brother could do it really well. I can't do it too great. So beautiful, their voices. They're getting the mass ready. And the one told the other, she says, come on, honey, tell father, tell father, tell him. And I said, what, what's wrong? She said, tell father. She said, oh, father. She said, it's my husband. And I said, so what else is new, you know? <laughs> I said, what about your husband? She said, well, my husband, he retired finally. After many years, he entered into his retirement. He's been looking forward to it all his life. We both were. He's now fully retired. I said, isn't that good? He said, well, Father, when I, he never leaves the house. He's like been retired now, I think she said for, if I remember correctly, two and a half years at that point. It was my first time at this church, two and a half years. And she said to me that, Father, he never leaves the house. When I'm home, he follows me around wherever I go. If I go to wash the dishes, he stands right next to me. He doesn't help, but he stands right next to me. If I vacuum the floor, he's right there. Father, when I go to the bathroom, he stands outside the door. I can't get rid of him. But he won't go outside if I go to the mailbox. I have to get the mail. I said, well, then get it more often. You know what I mean? She said, I don't know what to do. I said, I think I know just what you need to do. And she said, what? I said, I think you need a green scapular. So, because he heals not just physical things, but also emotional and psychological things, you see? And so I said, let me check my jacket. I had just flown in to England for the United States of America, and there was nothing in my pocket, but I was just praying. I said, Father Flanagan taught me to do our founder. So I went to my jacket and reached in my pocket, and lo and behold, there was one green scapular in my pocket. I couldn't believe it. I said, look, here it is. This is for your husband. Now, he may not want it. <laughs> so, hide it under the chair where he sits all the time. His favorite lounge chair. So he said, hide it under the chair. And whenever you receive the green scapular, you see either the person who receives it or the person who gives it, what's to say the prayer that's printed on the back of the scapular once a day. And it's a tiny prayer. Immaculate Heart of Mary, pray for us now and at the hour of our death. Would you say that after me now? Immaculate Heart of Mary, pray for us now and at the hour of our death. You got it, you see? You got it. That's all you have to do once a day. Says so you say it for him, put it under the chair, trust this to Jesus through his mother Mary. Okay, Father. So Mass was over. I left. I had to come back to that church for another month. We had a rotation, the priests who were there. So my turn came up again a month later. And I'm back at the three little churches in the boonies. And I go to this little church. The two sacristan ladies from Ireland are both there. And the one says, oh, Katie, Katie, tell Father, tell Father. Katie, tell him. I said, Katie, what, Katie, tell me. He says, Father, do you remember the story about my husband? I says, yes, I remember. And you gave me the green scapular. I remember. Did you hide it under his chair? I did. Did it work? Father! The next morning he got up and he went to get the mail himself. <laughs> the next morning. And then, when I went shopping later in the day, 
he asked me if he could come with me to the store. I, that's great. And Father, when I went to the store the next day, he also wanted to go with me. And Father, yes, Katie, wherever I go, he follows me. Wherever I go, he's always with me. I said, well, Katie, God used me to heal the first problem. I think you're on your own on the second one now. I think I did my job already. But that's how, how well the scapular works. Amen? And it heals physical, emotional, and psychological problems. So what I want to do is I want to touch the scapulars to the tabernacle now. Because I always like for the great high priest, the Lord Jesus Christ, for him to give your scapular his blessing. Is that okay? I'm going to ask Father Dennis to give a little tiny one, and then I'm going to go to the altar, then we're going to pass these out to you before I continue. And just in case, we'll bless both packs, just in case we need them. They're already blessed, but give a simple blessing. Take two or three bundles, boys. And we might need another helper or two to help the altar boys and brother, so everyone can get one rather quickly. Just, just take one, I would say. Don't, don't take two or three or four right now. Just take one per person. Brother, P.O. Luke wants to help you as well. These scapulars, beloved, Our Lady gave a special instruction on them. She says you don't actually have to wear them. She said just keep them close, she said. Keep them close. You can wear them, put it in your wallet, in your purse, or even on your pillow. The Virgin said just keep it close because it's for those who are suffering. And sometimes they don't, they don't feel good wearing things. So she's very gentle about her instruction. Now remember, there's a tiny little prayer printed on the back. It might be hard to read if you're getting older and silver-haired like me, but again, it's a very simple one-line prayer. You should say it once a day. Immaculate heart of Mary, pray for us, now and at the hour of our death. Amen. Would you raise your holy hand if you did not receive yet a green scapular, if you did not receive one? It's like we got everybody covered. We are millionaires, amen? amen? We'll be in showery with graces from the one who loves us. These sacramentals you have are immensely powerful. Thank you, sister. Thank you, brother. Thank you so much. Thank you, sister. Now, beloved, yes, sure. I'm going to give you another gift. And I wasn't planning on it, but the Spirit is moving my heart. I think maybe you've been good boys and girls. I'm just wondering, maybe. I'm going to give you another special gift. I don't know if I have enough for everybody, but I have about 200. So I want to give you a new prayer, quote unquote, new in the Catholic Church, with an imprimatur from the bishops of Nigeria a prayer given to a teenage boy in Africa. His name is Barnabas, which means son of the encouragement. We want to give you a prayer card because our Lord and Our Lady appeared to young Barnabas in the jungle in Nigeria. I actually met with his bishop. He appeared to the young man in the jungle. And by the way, the boy was what we call technically a pagan. 
He had, had no religion whatsoever. He had never been in any church, Catholic or any other church. When Jesus and Mary appeared to him in the woods, they began to appear to him every day. Would you believe Barnabas had never heard of the name Jesus or Mary? He had never even heard their names. So they began instructing him and telling him about the one golden pathway, the one true faith, it's called the Roman Catholic Church. Amen? And one day, beloved, the whole world will be Catholic. You know that, don't you? One day the whole world, in fact, Bishop Fulton J. Sheen, Venerable Sheen, prophesied that one day, through Our Lady of Fatima, the entire Muslim world will become Roman Catholic. Bishop Sheen said that, but so did St. Louis de Montfort. Amen? So, beloved, you're on the winning team. We want to pray that everyone gets to know and love Jesus Christ, even those who may be Muslims or Hindus or maybe those who are atheists. We don't judge them. We love them double. Amen? So let's stop right now. One Hail Mary for all the Muslims, the Hindus, the Buddhists, and the atheists, and for CNN to one day become converted. Is that okay? One Hail Mary for their conversion to the true faith because there's only joy in the Lord Jesus Christ. Amen? Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou amongst women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Glory be to the Father, to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit. Jesus and his most holy virgin mother taught Barnabas the entire Catholic faith for one year. They were his catechist. At the end of one year, they told the young man, now go to the local Catholic church and present yourself to the priest and ask him for the gift of baptism. So Barnabas went to the local church. He had been in the Catholic church. And he met the priest. And he told the priest, I, I'm Barnabas, and I want to be baptized. He says, well, that's great. Some, I, I don't know you. Where are you from? Well, he lived out in the woods with his family. So, okay, well, I'm, we're glad to have you. We have to give you lessons first to instruct you. He says, I already had my lessons for one year now. And the, he's the only priest in the whole area. Said, Who gave you the lessons? You know, Jesus and Mary. <laughs> what? Jesus and Mary, they gave me the lessons. Yeah, right. Yeah, they did. They told me to come and see you. The boy was so sincere, the father sat him down and gave him a test. And guess what? He knew the faith better than the priest did. <laughs> you would too if Jesus and Mary were your teachers. Amen? 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 Guess where he is right now? He's in the seminary starting to be a priest. Amen. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. And our Lord and our Lady gave him a whole bunch of prayers called the most precious blood of Jesus devotion. They're immensely powerful. I've been deeply impressed. I'm trained as an exorcist for many years now, and I've worked with some very serious things. I'm so impressed with the power of this prayer. Now, the book is only like 100 pages, but 100 pages of prayers. I looked through the book because I wanted to find the shortest and easiest one. See, I, I know Catholics, you know what I mean? I wanted to find the shortest one, the easiest one. And it was with one line prayer in the back of the book under the, the chapter called Mystical Prayers. There's 11 mystical prayers. All have the imprimatur. All have the imprimatur. They're all fully approved. The whole book. I met with the Archbishop for a long time. He said, Father, spread it, he said, spread it. Well, these prayers have the power of combating you-know-who, El Diablo, the devil. And the experiences that I've had have been nothing short than incredible or miraculous, nothing short than that. So I chose the shortest prayer, and then I asked a good friend to help me make a little card for it, so we sort of designed it. She's a graphic designer. We made it now with English on one side and Spanish on the other. I'd like to give you this prayer and pray it with you. And here's why. Frequently, 
my healing from the Lord Jesus is blocked by a demonic presence. We, we speak of the spirit of infirmity, the demons of sickness. There are certain demons that will block you from getting better. I really saw it beautifully illustrated once in one of our own salt missions out west on an Indian reservation. When an Indian family, an American Indian family, came up to my brother who was the pastor, and I was visiting for just a few weeks to help them with a few problems in the parish. I was just there for a couple of weeks to preach and to heal and help with a few little things. A family came in for healing. My brother, Father Tony, said, Jim, would you take them downstairs? It was a chapel downstairs. And pray with them. Sure. So I brought the grandmother and the children and the grandchildren downstairs in front of the tabernacle and prayed over all of them. And as I prayed, God would give me a word of knowledge for each one. My energy would show me something they needed. It was very beautiful what was happening. The other kids knew when I would say something, they, they all looked like, whoa, how do you know that? God showed me what each one needs. And some of them were kind of funny, like the little girl I prayed over, I said, oh, you're looking for a husband, aren't you? God says, don't worry, I've got one for you. But don't look for him, look for me. Amen? Don't look for your spouse, look for God. God has your spouse. Amen? All kinds of beautiful things were happening. Some physical healings as well. About 20 members of the family, we got all done. I thought we were finished, but I looked up to see the matriarch, the grandmother who brought them all in. I said, Grandmom, don't you want a blessing too? She's just like, so the beautiful grandmothers, she wanted her children and grandchildren to be healed. She didn't think a thing about herself. She's sitting in the back, but she brought them. Grandmom, don't you want a healing too? Yes, Father. Uh, can I pray for something for you? Oh, she's so shy. Yes, Father. And she showed me her hand, and her hand was withered in arthritis. It looked wickedly painful. And this hand was the same down here. She showed them to me. I said, Grandmom, can I pray for you? Yes, Father. So I put my two fingers on her hand to pray for healing. In the name of Jesus Christ. And I moved my hand back. Oh, Grandmom, you don't have arthritis. You have a demon on you. You have a curse. It's very common in certain cultures to put curses on one another, you see. You, you don't have a sickness, you have a curse. Grandmom, yes, would you let me release you from that curse? We always work within people's free will, amen? I'm going to be respectful, get her permission. But the American Indian people are very aware of the spiritual world, much more than we are. They totally believe it. She knew just what I was saying. She said, yes, Father. I said, let me take your hand again. She put her hand up all withered. And I put my fingers back on. And I said, in the holy name of Jesus Christ, I rebuke and bind the evil spirit, and I break the curse in his name. When I said that, her hand popped open. Five years of painful arthritis was healed in less than five seconds by Jesus Christ, King of Kings, Lord of Lords, Prince of Peace, Wonder Counselor, God forever, Jesus Christ. Amen? Five seconds she was healed of five years of excruciating pain. Amen? When her hand popped open, I looked down, the other hand popped open at the same time. Because he does all things well. Amen? Hallelujah. Why do I mention that? Sometimes the demonic world is blocking our healing. Amen? That's why we gave you the green, the, um, the St. Benedict medal first, to bind anything evil from you. When we pray over you, the healing can go freely. Amen? But I want to give you another gift to put the blessing on your whole family. The prayer that God himself taught Barnabas. So I'm going to ask my altar servers and brother to come up again and give one of these. I think we have 200. Do we have enough for 200, do you think? If we don't, then take them, share them like with married couples if we don't.
Thank you, Father. So you're receiving a little one-line prayer from the visionary in Africa, tested and approved by not only the bishop, but the whole bishop's conference of Nigeria has approved it. And it releases us from anything diabolical or our family. And I find in particular, this has been my own experience now for many, many years, I think we've distributed more than one million of these now, free of charge, never charge for anything. I notice it has two particular charisms, depression, healing depression, minor or major, and addiction, drugs, alcohol, pornography, anger, addictions. It has those two special graces, apparently, to heal depression, major or minor, and addictions of all sorts. Maybe the two biggest problems in our country today, amen? Maybe the two biggest problems. Many do not realize that depression has a distinctly diabolical element to it. Sometimes it's totally diabolical, sometimes it's only halfway diabolical. The devil likes to jump on my sadness. He makes a mountain out of a molehill. That's what he likes to do. If something small, he'll make it bigger. He always lessens the glory and the respect and the honor due to God. He lessens your purity and your virtue, but he increases your sadness and your misery. This prayer dissolves his strongholds. Somebody here needs one. We want to pray the prayer a little bit together. I find the best way to get ready for a healing is to drive the devil out. Amen? So this prayer has only 12 words to it in English. Most, most precious blood of Jesus Christ, save us in the whole world. Most precious blood of Jesus Christ, save us in the whole world. Most precious blood of Jesus Christ, save us in the whole world. It's simple, isn't it? You can memorize it probably in five minutes or less. Have it memorized. You may want to take a picture on your cell phone and send it to all your contacts. And let's free all the phoenix from the evil one. Amen? Now, let's do it a couple times together. This is how I do it. Our Lady actually recommended, in fact, if you look on the back on the Spanish side, I think it's printed in the Spanish, she recommended 500 times a day. That's up to you. It's not a canon law. This is a recommendation. Do what you can. I do it 500 times every morning, year-round. I did it this morning where I was staying. And it releases you from anything or those you're helping that day. You will feel intoxicated by the Holy Spirit. You will feel the freedom of the Lord Jesus Christ if you plead his blood over your family. When you're pleading the blood, it's, it's the sacrifice of the Mass coming into your house is what's happening, you see? Now let's do those two in particular, those two maladies in particular. Depression, I can see, I'm, I'm allowed to see certain things in the Spirit. We have an unusually a bigger number than normal of people here tonight. You're suffering with depression. I, I can see it very, very clearly. I don't mean to say necessarily major, but there's also minor depression. You know, like you, you don't want to get out of bed in the morning ever, you see? Or you never, you don't, you don't have major depression like you're not under psychotropic drugs, but you're never happy. Nothing ever makes you happy. There's something wrong with that, you see? It shouldn't be. There's a lot of depression going on around the country and the world. We are under attack in a major way. And what I've seen is my work, especially as an exorcist, but I'm all over the world, is this. Satan's main attack is to drain all hope and all joy out of the church and out of the world. So we're completely hopeless and completely joyless. Isn't it true? trying to rob you of your joy. Don't you dare let him do that. Beginning tonight, we start praying for joy every day of your life from now on. Amen? Joy is not a nicety. Joy is a necessity. Amen? You must have joy. It's a fruit of the Holy Spirit. You can't find it at Walmart. It's a fruit of the Holy Spirit. Amen? Beginning today, pray for joy. So we're going to pray 10 in a row. I'm going to say the first half, if you please answer, for all depression to leave us and for joy to take its place. Are you ready? I'm going to lead it 10 times in a row. 
I'm going to say, most precious blood of Jesus Christ, you would answer, save us and the whole world. In the name of the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit, most precious blood of Jesus Christ, most precious blood of Jesus Christ, most precious blood of Jesus Christ, most precious blood of Jesus Christ. 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 How do you feel? The church actually looks different. There's a light that came over your heads. I see it clearly now from three minutes ago. There's a difference already. You've got you know who on the run. You've got him on the run now. Let's say ten more now for anybody in your family. They're not here tonight, but they're somewhere. For anybody in your family or my, it's in my family too, in your family or mine that's suffering from depression, ten more to set our family free. Most precious blood of Jesus Christ. 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 Amen. So now, beloved, it's your decision, but I would encourage you to use this prayer in a major way for yourself and your family every day. Amen? Amen. It's powerful, it's safe, it's effective, it's approved. How can you go wrong? You each owe me $1 million. Amen? Amen. You are blessed beyond measure. Now, it's also very powerful for addictions, for addictions. We're going to pray some in just a moment. I'm going to tell you a true story that happened in Texas, where we have another salt community, several there. I was serving at a parish in Texas. I was visiting to do a healing mass. But after the healing mass, I was there for a day or two. I was doing just a daily mass. After the daily mass, I was in the sacristy changing my robes, and a group of people came in for blessings. It was unannounced, but it was okay. So I prayed over like about 25 people. It took about an hour. Got all 25 done. Then I proceeded to finish removing my robe. When the sacristan lady came up to me, said, Father, there's one more. And I said, where? And she said, over there. I said, oh, come here. And the young man came up to me. I didn't recognize him. He had a three-piece suit on and a tie. He went to shake my hand, and then I recognized him. I had been to that same parish, St. Anthony's, six months previous. Same thing. I did a healing mass six months before. The day of the healing mass, in the afternoon before it started, a grandmother came into the office with her grandson. She called in advance. She was coming from the hospital. She came there. I just happened to be there. But the grandmother knew we were having a healing mass that night. They knocked on the door. My brother let them in, Father Tony. It was a young man who was dying of a drug overdose. He had just come out of the hospital. They begged him not to leave. They did not know what he had inside of him. They couldn't find what it was with the various tests that they do. But because he was in his 20s, he was legally allowed to sign himself out. The doctors and the nurses at Corpus Christi Hospital, called Spawn Hospital, they said, please don't go, you're going to die. Don't go. But he was afraid to stay. 
because he was overdosing on illegal drugs. And in Texas, even though you're overdosing, if they find it's an illegal drug, you're arrested in the hospital with, with police officers, with revolvers, with guns. If you can't leave the hospital, they assign one or two guards, policemen with guns, outside your door. If you get better, you go straight to jail. If you die, they say goodbye. It's really strict there. He was on illegal drugs, did not want to stay, did not want to go to the hospital or the jail. So he signed himself out. His grandmother picked him up. She took him straight to St. Anthony's Church. They're in the conference room. They say, emergency, all priests, come down to the room, the conference room, emergency, on the loudspeaker system. Five of us priests ran down. My brother was already there. I peeked in to see what the problem was. I looked in the boy's eyes, and I saw the demon. That's called the discernment of spirits. I could see the demonic presence in his eyes. I was the only one trained as an exorcist in the whole group. I said, Anthony, brothers, I'll take care of this one. They all were worn out anyway. You go rest. I'll take care of this one. I sat down with the boy and his grandmother. I said, call your dad and mom right now. I can't, Father, I can't. You have to. Oh, they, they can't find out what I'm doing. They'll kill me. I was thinking, well, you're already dying. You know what I mean? Maybe they're going to kill you. But I didn't say that out loud. I said, no, no, they'll love you. They're going to help us. Call them. He finally called. They came, his mother and father. I gave mother and father and the grandmother and the boy the card you have in your hand. So we're going to pray this prayer right now. I led it 50 times. And they, we did all 500. I did the first 50. You just use your rosary beads. Go around the rosary once, that's 50. When I led the first 50, the boy began to scream. It was not a human scream. Not a scream you've ever heard before. A diabolical scream. Came out of his bowels. It was ungodly. It was the demon screaming terror because he knew his time was up. Amen? The demon cannot come against the blood of Christ. He was screaming because he was frightened, the devil. Did all 50? I said, Dad, you lead the next 50, the father. The father led the next 50. The boy stopped screaming, but began to weep and cry like you've never seen a young man cry in your life. You could see he had a broken heart. He was dying as he cried from his guts. Dad led 50, he finished, and Mom, you lead the next 50. Mom led 50 in a row. The boy continued crying, but now it was gentle. It wasn't a loud and deep guttural cry. It was a gentle cry. Whatever it was, you see, it was being healed in stages. Hey, Grandma, you lead the next 50. Grandma led 50 in a row. Then he stopped crying completely. He just shook uncontrollably. But no more screaming or crying, just shaking. Grandma got done. I said, now, hijo, you lead us in 50. The young man led at 50 perfectly. Perfectly. He said, Wow, we did 250. Let's keep going. So I lit another 50. 50 for Papa, 50 for Mama, 50 for Grandma, 50 for the boy. How many was that? 500. It took us maybe 35 minutes. When the young man took the last 50, he did number 49, most precious blood of Jesus Christ, save us in the whole world. Then he did number 50. When he did number 50 and we answered, the boy looked at me and said to me, Father, it's gone! I never said anything about a devil to that group. I never mentioned anything about a demon. Not even once. I just said, let's pray. He knew what was inside of him. Amen? Believe me, they know. He said, it's gone, Father! I said, I know it's gone. Jesus just set you free. Amen? When you go home, hijo, say it 500 more times for your homework to keep it from coming back. You know what I mean? Because they always come back the next day. Well, six months later, I'm back in the church, said this a little daily mass, prayed over people. Who comes up at the very end? A young man with a three-piece suit and a tie. He looked like a movie star. He shook my hand. I didn't know who it was. He said, Father, I came back to thank you. And when he said that, I recognized him. I'm the boy that was dying. Father, you need to know something. Yes. 
from the moment we finished those prayers, I haven't touched one drug in six months. And the desire for the drugs has left me completely as well. Amen? Alleluia. Is God great or is God great? Amen? Dios es grande? Amen. Beloved, God is beautiful. And he has power for all of our needs. Amen? Now let's say this ten times in a row for anybody in this church tonight who's struggling with any form of addiction, whether it's alcohol or anything else. Let's pray for that release from addiction. Are you ready? Most precious blood of Jesus Christ. 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 Amen. How do you feel? You're getting better looking every five minutes. Now we're going to do ten more for your family members. Now I know we all have someone, don't we? We all have somebody addicted to alcohol or drugs. Everybody does. We're going to pray now for their liberation. You don't need to pray over them. Don't do that. Let the exorcists do that. But you can pray for them with this prayer from a distance. People are set free all the time from this prayer. I'm going to have you lead me now, ten times in a row, for anybody in our families addicted to drugs or alcohol or anything else. You lead me now, most. Save us in the whole world. 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 Save us and 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 the whole world. Amen. You know what to do now. Amen? So what we're going to do now, beloved... Oh, the Spirit's moving my heart. I'm sorry. He's telling me we have to pray for Phoenix. Now, I don't, I don't know what's here. Oh! That's, isn't that something? I just get the anointing now over me. This prayer... Uh, our sister was reminding us there was a satanic conference here. Is that right? Just recently? So that must be what he's trying to tell me. He says, pray for Phoenix. We need to pray for our hometown. That's actually biblical, you know, to have loyalty to your hometown and your home country. Let's pray for Phoenix now. Anything demonic that was brought in, we push right out by the blood of Christ. Amen? Amen. And not just pushed out, pushed down to hell. Amen? Amen? So let's pray now for Phoenix, ten in a row, anything demonic to go. Amen? Amen. Would you stand with me, friends, please? We have to take authority over this. Now that's the Holy Spirit. See, I'm even aware of that. He said, pray for Phoenix. Let's pray now. It's a deliverance prayer that you just learned. We're going to take authority. Let's do all 12 words together 10 times over the city of Phoenix. All together. Most precious blood of Jesus Christ, save us and the whole world. Most precious blood of Jesus Christ, save us and the whole world. Most precious blood of Jesus Christ, save us and the whole world. Most precious blood of Jesus Christ, save us and the whole world. Most precious blood of Jesus Christ, save us and the whole world. Most precious blood of Jesus Christ, 
save us and the whole world. Most precious blood of Jesus Christ, save us and the whole world. Most precious blood of Jesus Christ, save us and the whole world. Most precious blood of Jesus Christ, save us and the whole world. Most precious blood of Jesus Christ, save us and the whole world. Amen. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou amongst women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. I'm going to entrust, brothers and sisters, the robe of Padre Pio to our good father, Father Dennis. He's going to hold it in his hands, and we're going to line up, brother as well, in the two altar boys. We're going to have four men standing in a row, each with their own relic. So Father will have Padre Pio's robe, and Father's going to stand on the left there. I don't know, Brother Ryan or Father, should we move these out of the way, you think, or keep them? Maybe the boys can move the kneelers and the table out of the way. Maybe one over here where I'm going to be standing, maybe one over here, just for myself. And I'm going to put oil on your forehead. Boys, you can move those out. Then I'm going to entrust to Brother Ryan a first-class relic, which means a bone, from the one pope I know of in modern times who had the gift of healing. His name is St. Pope Pius X. He had a healing ministry as pope. John Paul did too, by the way. So Brother Ryan's going to have this in his hand, and you'll go first to father and then to brother. You touch them with one or both hands. Then with our altar boys, first we're going to have St. Charbel. This is a first class relic. I mean, it's a bone the bone from St. Charbel, and Brother's going to have this in his hand, and he'll stand next to Brother there. And then lastly, we have another first-class relic. This is the blood of St. Hannibal. In Italian, Annabali. Have you heard of Luisa Picaretta? This is her spiritual director. This is the priest who gave the first imprimatur to the writings of the divine will. He was canonized by John Paul, and for some reason, this little relic is the most powerful of all of them. Amazing. This is his blood here. He's a Catholic priest and a canonized saint, and this young man will stand here. So what you're going to do, my dear friends, we might need an usher or two to help us, but when you come up, I'm going to place the Lord on the altar, so make sure you bow to the Lord. You'll come to Father Dennis and touch the robe. You touch St. Pope Pius X, then St. Charbel, and then St. Hannibal. They say Anibale in Italy. You touch all four of those, you will feel the anointing of the Holy Spirit, because I'm feeling it right now like I'm going to fall over. You will feel the anointing of the Holy Spirit. Then if you'd like to, you'd come stand or kneel, and I'm going to place some blessed oil, blessed by the bishop, on your forehead, to seal your healing in the Holy Spirit. Amen? This is not the sacrament of anointing. We don't do that in this big crowd like this, but it's still awesomely powerful. You're going to touch four relics, come up with the oil on your forehead. Do we have a couple of ushers to help us to keep oil? Maybe Father can help us, okay? Just to keep things um, orderly, sister. So I'm not sure, Father, what order would you like to go in? Just, just start from the... Should we just... Yes. Okay, so maybe come right here, but start with Father. Sure, if anybody's in a wheelchair or with crutches, they can come up first. I am. Put the, if you put the table sure. here.
O sacrament most holy, O sacrament divine. O sacrament most holy, O sacrament divine. O sacrament most holy, O sacrament divine. Let's pray the Lord's Prayer together to ask God the Father to heal us through his Son, Jesus, and in the power of the Spirit. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Amen. It's always best to ask the mother of the Eucharist to intercede too to her son for our healing. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou amongst women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners now and at the hour of our death. And glory be to the Father, to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit. And now the first ones can begin.